welcome to this rocket design video where I'm going to show you how to set up a new Unity project, how to install the uh, rocket simulation package. Um, I'm going to show you basically around the rocket simulation package itself what things do and then finally show you how to run your first simulations. So to start off with uh, we need to fire up the Unity Hub program which you should have installed as part of the general Unity uh, installation and it should come up with a projects window a bit like this. And a couple of things we need to do to, to get things how we want it. First thing is we want to make sure that when we create a new project it stores it in the right place. And to do that if we click on the uh, gear icon and then under projects, project location, we can see where the default location is. Um, and it's really important that you change this to somewhere that you remember and know where it is and also that the location isn't too long. If it's too long, Unity sometimes can't create the project, so it's better to keep a much shorter um, uh, file path there. So we're going to change this to somewhere a bit more where I know where it is. And in fact, what I'm going to do is just going to store it on the hard disk and so under C. Okay, so that's where it's going to store all my projects. So I can X out of that. Then I need to uh, click the button that says create new project. And then here I need to check that I'm using the right version of Unity. So if you've installed previous versions of Unity, they, they might all be up here. What you want to do is use the latest version of Unity that you've installed and check that the tick box is there on the latest 2021 version of Unity that you've installed. So you can always um, open projects in later versions of Unity. You can't open them in earlier versions. So key thing here is, is that whatever version that you're team is using, make sure that you're consistently using the same one. Okay, we were going to do a 3D project, so make sure it's it's clicked on 3D, which is the default. And then lastly, we need to give the project a sensible name. Uh, if you don't, you end up with lots of projects called My Project, and you can't remember which one's which. So let's call this Rocket Simulation uh, Version 1. Okay, already naming already exists. Let's call it Version 2 great project. Okay, so Unity will wear away, it takes a little while for it to set up all the right files for the project, um, but it should be done in a few minutes. Okay, so Unity set up a new blank project uh, with nothing in it, and if we just quickly look what it's created, if we're on the top left here, you can see the name of the project you created, Rocket Simulation V2. And then after that, it says sample scene. So within a project, you can have many different scenes. And by default, when you start a new project, it just calls the scene sample scene. And this has nothing in it, basically. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to load the rocket simulation and we're going to use the scene from that. Um, what else have we got? We've got the project window here, which shows you all the files that go with the uh, just supporting a project, but without any actual simulation stuff in there. Uh, and then we've got the console here, which is where messages, the Unity sends you messages. Okay, so that's all good. So what we're going to now do is um, load the Unity package with the rocket simulation in. So if you go into the top menu here, File, Edit, Assets, and come down to Import Package, and then sl slide across to Custom Package. Um, <laughs> You now need to install the package that you downloaded from the Rocket Briefing document. So I did this earlier yesterday, and this here is the package uh, that's highlighted in the or the link to within the briefing document. And you just need to make check it's the right one. So you may have old ones there, out of date things there. Just check it says the Water Rocket V1, and then there'll be some version number there. It may have incremented by the time you do this. Uh, but check that's the one that you've downloaded uh, from the briefing document and then click open a uh, whole lot of things it's going to bring in um, we want all of those so we're not going to bother any ticking we're just going to do import and it'll wear away for a bit bringing all those things into the project okay and about two-thirds of the way through it's asked me whether it wants to install the the text mesh pro Central resources, I'm just going to say yes, I want that because we want to be able to do 
writing on the screen. And there we go, it's all installed. So some other things have appeared in your project now. So we've got bottle rocket tools and various other things in assets. And then most importantly, we've got a folder called scenes. And if we double click on that, we've got three Unity scenes. And it's actually quite hard to see what these are called because of the way the Unity, Unity does the icons. But this little slider button here, if you change it, if you make it smaller, conversely, you can then read everything. And the thing we're after is the water rocket simulation main scene. And this is the scene you need to open uh, to run the simulation. So if you double click on that, uh, the scene will open. Uh, you may have noticed a little yellow warning message appears on the bottom. So on the whole, yellow triangles are warnings and you can ignore those. Red triangles are errors, so you have to do something about those. So we've got yellow triangles, we can just ignore them and they'll disappear. And we've got our rocket simulation set up. And if you look in the top left now, it says rocket simulation V2, which is our project, and then water rocket simulator main scene, which is just the scene that we opened. And you need to keep a check on if you're getting lost in your projects, just making sure the one that you're working on is the one you think it is. And up here on the left, we've got the scene hierarchy. Um, so that's the scene. And then underneath that is rocket simulation. And if you click the little triangle next to it, it'll open up all the things beneath it. And the thing we're most interested in is the simulation configuration. So as I click on that, the inspector window over here opens up of all the things that we can change within the simulation configuration. Uh, ignore the transform, that just tells where it is in the scene. Um, but these things here are the things we're interested in. So we can change the test mode. Uh, we can change things like the build quality of the rocket, where the fins are. Uh, we can change the launch conditions, the environment. Um, we can speed up or slow down the simulation if we want to. So those are all the things that we can do. Um, but first off, let's just have a go at running it and see what happens. Um, if we zoom in a bit, actually, first thing you'll notice, you think, where's my rocket? It's covered in windmills. And the reason is, is by default, Unity starts with what's called a gizmos are on. So these gizmos are little indicators that there's something in there that you can't see. So if you click on that button, it turns the gizmos off and you can see your rocket. So this is a fairly random um, setup of a rocket. There's nothing particularly good or bad about it, um, uh, but it's just a set of random parameters to start off with. And if we run that, jumps to the game view, and we can see the rocket kind of doing its stuff. Not a great flight, but it kind of worked. Brilliant. So if we stop that, um, I noticed the game view seemed a bit small. Uh, I quite like to see the whole thing. Um, so what you can do is if you change this to a, a larger resolution, it will make it bigger. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you click on play maximized when you run the simulation, the game view will go to the whole window. So that's quite good if you're recording videos. I'm going to leave it just playing in a small window for now. Okay, so that was a free flight. Uh, if we want to now change something, so maybe we want to change the uh, elevation angle of the rocket. So let's make it fly off at a bit of a flatter thing. I'm going to change it to say 30 degrees. Uh, and then what I have to do is click update configuration and I can see what I've done. So you need to change your parameter and update. So now that's going to come off sideways. So a quick look, see what happens there. Twangs a bit when it starts and then comes off sideways oh there we go and a little parachute comes out okay so that's good um, what I'm gonna now do is set that back up to 90 and update it and then have a look at what else you can do so if we go to wind tunnel mode uh, and update configuration it now puts our little rocket in a wind tunnel and what's happened now is is that the rocket is pinned at the center of gravity so that black and white ball in the middle is where the center of gravity is and there's a kind of virtual pin holding it there and we've got wind blowing from left to right so we can do things like change the wind speed so that's me I'm dragging I've clicked on that X and dragged it or 
Y is in the up and down direction. I can introduce a cross gust. So imagine on takeoff, you've got a crosswind. So I've introduced crosswind. There it is pointing into the wind that way. I can reverse the wind direction and so on. And what you can do here is you can assess the position and size of your fins, how good it is at making the rocket stable. And the idea is, is the rocket should point into the wind to make it stable, but not too vigorously. If it's too stable, then you'll find all sorts of thing, unwanted things happen when there's a crosswind. OK, that's the wind tunnel. Stop that and, and let's have a go at the thrust test. And we run that. So what happens here is is that the uh, the rocket is now bolted to a um, instead of being a pin joint, it's a rigid joint, and it just runs the thrust through. And this this one's good when you're trying to just concentrate on um, looking at effective water fraction on the thrust. This little scene's quite good for working that out. And the last scene we have is the drop test. So this is kind of testing out your parachute. Um, Let's increase the parachute size a little bit and try dropping that. So in this case now that the rocket is just dropped from a height and there's no floor or anything and you can just see what's going on. Great, so the other things, uh, this is introduced in a later video, but if you want to start getting numerical data from your simulation, if you, if you hold down Control G and Control and press G, you get what's called the graph window up and this will display um, data from your launch as it's progressing and you need to make sure that the the log data's button is pressed um, and this will send data to this graphing window so for example in this simulation if we now run it you can see the uh, rocket falling down vertical velocity and then it'll show you what the descent rate of your rocket is uh, based on the parachute size and its weight. Equally if you change to the thrust test and leave grapher on log data if you run the experiment here it will now log thrust and you can see how your thrust varies with time. If you're capturing visuals or videos of things, um, some logging data does slow your simulation down. So if, you, if you're not getting the frame rate you want, you can uncheck that and the uh, simulation will run a bit faster. Lastly, before we go, just some top tips on navigating around the world. Um, you can use your mouse. So if I'm holding down the middle mouse button and dragging, I can move around. The wheelie mouse will move you backwards and forwards and the um, alt will allow you to spin round um, the object you're looking at. So those are a few things you can do. You can also look at a plan view. If you click on Y, that'll look straight down. Uh, if you look on X, you can look sideways and so on. And that gives you a chance to just kind of check out to make sure when you've redesigned your rocket. So let's say we put the fins down a bit, fin vertical position, put them down a bit, update configuration, and we're on thrust test stand. Let's go to free flight update configuration. So actually, I've actually pushed the fins beyond the uh, the rocket, so you couldn't actually stick them on there, but it gives you a chance to see what's going on. Equally, you can look at things like if you want to make the nose a bit finer, and um, that shows what it's like with a, a longer nose on, and so on. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the simulation. You've seen how you start with the uh, Unity Hub to start a new blank Unity project. Uh, you then import the rocket simulation um, asset pack into your um, blank project uh, and once that's in you open the water rocket simulation main scene and then you get here and then I've shown you there if you click on the simulation configuration you can go through all the different parameters in the simulation and get on with your design work to try and understand how these parameters affect the design of your rocket so ultimately you can build the best possible rocket you can for launch day.